Right then, you are now looking at the Class D dry state push pull controller. This is it. This is the one that we're going to hang our hat on. Not to make it too landmarky. Now, uh, it's that circuit there. Uh, what we've done is we designed it, and I had problems before. Um, because we've got problems with the uh, noise in the circuit and I've still got to deal with that because there still is some noise in the circuit if you look at the scope you can see those lines are a little bit on the rough side and there's a reason for that not on the output too much but but the input drive is bad so what I might do is actually put um, some uh, drivers uh, before the inputs so we can drive the circuit quite hard Yeah. But you can see, right now, what we're running at here. Let me just. Uh, okay, so what we're running at here is 32k, and as you can see, that the yellow is the input, and the blue is the output, and that's pretty good. 2k. You can see we have got a switching. Dish. Let me just go for that. Oops, wrong way. So our switching delay, right, it's a one microsecond scale. So the switching delay is two microseconds. Now, what we've got here, okay, that kind of dog leg, is um, where the uh, primary transistors are leaving uh, the output open. So that's a transition to center, where it's basically just negates on their own, I think. Right? And then when you actually switch in it, you can see how it goes so it goes really quickly right now that switching there from the center down is when it switches the uh, the output FET hard on and you can see that's pretty vertical isn't it um, I don't know if I can get the uh, oh crikey let me see if I can mess with this to see if you can get the slope in and you can't really see it. The scale here is 0.2, uh, is 200 nanoseconds, and it's within that. So 100 nanoseconds, and then we get the ringing. Okay, <clears throat> so that's actually switching in 100 nanoseconds on the output. Mhm. Mm Crikey. Yeah, you can see there. Okay. Oops. Yeah. We shift the Y. X rather. There we go. Right. So, oh, yeah, what I want to do is just there we go. So you can see the other side now. Same story. Um, there's a, a kind of there's the delay, the switching delay, and then we get that high attack. And again, it's in the same sort of time scale. I'm not going to fiddle around and get to it, but you you can see if I switch. So you can see they are pretty much the same, maybe that one's slightly longer, because it goes further. That's all. But the switching delay is 2 microseconds. Okay. What I'm going to do, that's measuring it on put. So if I take that off, yes, and measure it on the push-pull stage. Right, now that's measuring it on the, that's switching the high side. So that's, so you can see it on the circuit. We're connected there. Okay, we're connected here onto this line here. We were connected on the output first, which is there, but now we're connected here. And now you can see, look at that. That is well within one microsecond. You know, isn't it? Defo. <laughs> right, and there you go again. You can see the switching there is within a microsecond on both of them. You see, and the delay is two microseconds. So that ex you see, you, see, you can see how it translates. That one actually initiates that, and that's the actual switching delay, right? And then if I move to the other side of the resistor, right? So we're now on that bit there. Okay. Now you can see the opposite occurs. See, we've got the 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 switch down there, which is obviously again within one microsecond, and there you got your two microsecond switching delay and then the rise time which is well within a microsecond so for this portion of the circuit here right there's a two second 
a two microsecond delay, storage time as if it were, and then less than a microsecond, this is sticking. Oh well. Right, that gives. Why does it keep sticking? Yeah. Are you going to carry on doing that or what? Anyway. So that's what we get there. Now, th this is the input, right, which is actually taken from uh, there. So we've got the, the this is the pin, right, and it comes through on the tape to here, and then it's it's taken off from there. Those LEDs aren't in circuit. And that's powering through to the input there, and you can see. And if I put it on the uh, sweep, you can see how it works. Okay, now what it is, is I've got an extra diode in there. I tried to put four in, but it was just too noisy. So it didn't work. Oh, and there you can see now, magnified on the sweep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other side. There you go. See? Nice sharp rise time and fall time. Both sides. Okay. So that's given us that. And then it, that's taken it through now to the output. So we've got a nice sharp rise time and fall time. Which we're using in the, uh, in the Class D amplifier section. Which is this bit here. Okay, we've also got a little hack in here, and this is something which actually does need to be improved because it's making it's, it's got a direct path back. You see, what we've got is this circuit here, and the reason why that circuit's in there is because we need the 12 volt offset so we can charge that gate, but we only need it when we're actually charging the gate. And so, this transistor switches on to the plus 5 volt rail and provides the current for the base of that and that little regulator circuit there. So it gives you the 12 volt offset. So when you're actually switching that transistor on, right, which is when this goes low, so that goes low, this transistor switches on, right, which switches that one on, right, which then pulls all those low and, and it, it starts turning this on, right, which then provides current from there, which is coming from that. So what we've done is we've put in that so that that only starts providing current for these stages when we're actually charging that and you think okay well why, why have you got that connected there you've got all this other arrangement here well because we need the push-pull circuit to work so we can time the uh, the dead zone so that's why that's there and this one just simply makes sure because obviously switch is on and this this part of the, the circuit will it'll start uh, it'll switch on at the same time as this but the difference is, is that that will be switching off and it's the offs that are slow. So that will be off, right? And then it will come down and it will eventually start charging the gate on the low side. So that's the reason why that's there. Now, obviously, this is the output and it's providing a path straight back to almost to the input. So that's a bit poo that and we'll have to work it with that because when that's working on high voltage and stuff, we're going to start frying MCUs. We don't really want that. And also there's going to be a noise so I might end up with an opto in there or perhaps a high impedance stage or something I don't know something just to uh, help that out but the basic circuit does work you're seeing it working there see there you go and the voltage swing is full rail to rail right if I take that out okay so you can see now Something's gone a bit off. Oh. Just checking all components. Don't think there's anything hot. No. Oh, the resistors here. These resistors here, they're getting blooming hot because they're across the supply. Right, so if I... 0.02 volts, right, and that's when it's pulling down. 0.2 volts, you can see that LED's on. And if I now turn it to the other LED, 24.05 that's that is where the ground is this is relative to the minus 24 so that's 24.05 so you can see that it does switch pretty hard rail to rail it's hardly anything no okay put it back in here I'll find it oh dear oh, it came from much there didn't it Oops, there we go. Right, 
So we've got an input right there, you go, see? Yeah. And of course, this is fading a PWM. This isn't switching anything, this is fading a PWM. So this is switching at 32K all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Which is pretty cool. Right, so what we've got there, right, is that at 32K. This is designed for 16. Okay, so we're at twice the frequency, still giving us a good um, hard sweep. And you can see lots of parallel lines in that, so things are being switched quite hard rail. Right, and if I take that out, you can see how it goes pro approximately centre. Ooh, keep hitting something else there, I think. And put it back in. It's there, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> so this is working, right? And that circuit is that circuit. So the next stage now, of course, is to um, first of all to do some PWM tests on a real motor, just to see what we get in terms of noise, because it's probably going to be cool. So we might have to maybe put in uh, an extra transistor stage in here, so as to decouple that or something like that. I don't know. Perhaps a diode. And uh, and then we should get uh, what we need. Oh, also, we've put in our 1Ks in here to give us our high switching time, right? So that's a potential divider there and here, which gives us our high switching times, you see? And that will mean that that is going to be at a roundabout a volt, and so is that. They're both going to be a volt when, uh, relative to their emitters potential difference which means it gives us our high switching speeds you see and because we've got three dials here instead of two and then the LED this is probably going to be at around about a volt as well and so is that you see so we've trying to make we're trying to uh, make sure that our bases are kept um, you know that the low voltage the uh, the potential difference at the base without the transistor in there is going to be around about a volt which means that then the transistor is not switched hard into the saturation zone, it's, it's just into it. So it saturates it, but only just, and then that means it doesn't take much to turn it off again. And of course it's got a 1K there, so that's a pretty good path, and so is that one. Yeah. So we're really chuffed. I'm going to take some photographs of the uh, scope so we can get the traces on there. But that's pretty much it. We had, what it is before, we didn't have these uh, high impedance uh, transfer stages, emitter followers. And it didn't work. And the reason why it didn't work was because uh, we had a 1K in there and a 1K in there. And these were basically sinking an awful lot of supply just to try and charge those and discharge them. So we were putting an awful lot of noise onto the supply lines, supply rails. And that was coupling back into the, uh, into the um, uh, MCU. It was just basically putting loads of noise on there. I believe, and it's something like that. And, but also because of that, we're actually having closer coupling here between the outputs and the inputs. And so it made a right mess of it, basically. Yep. So I think, you know, that's the basic circuit. We're probably gonna need a few a few extra transistors to boost currents and match currents better in there, and maybe a few diodes in there to try and block stuff from going back. But that is the basic circuit, and that is it. This is a Class D push-pull tri-state controller. Yep, no cast codes, because we don't need them. Might need them later when we go to high voltage, but we don't need them now. We've got the speeds without them, which is better, because then that means you're switching rail to rail. Right then, that'll do.